Hello brethren, uh, welcome to today's uh, word. My name is Minister John. Uh, I believe you have been well and God has kept you safe and sound. Uh, today God has given me a very special word that I want to share with us. And I know that the Lord is going to bless us. God has given me a very simple word today and it is a word about pride. I know everyone has come across a person who is proud or you have heard something about pride and uh, one thing that I am sure is that at least in one point uh, in life you have encountered someone who has shown pride or even yourself as a person at one point uh, you have shown uh, pride in your life and that is the basic word that I want us uh, to share today and uh, I know that the Lord is going uh, to bless us. Pride as per se is not a bad thing. Uh, there is what we call good pride. For example, a parent can be proud of his children. Uh, a student can be proud of themselves when they pass their exams. So pride is not something that uh, we would say it's bad as per se. But it depends to what extent you take it. Uh, when we are happy about our achievements and we are proud about ourselves that is good pride but when we make the achievements now become the center of attention and uh, they make us arrogant then that becomes a bad pride stick to the end of this video and let us hear what god has to say to us about pride uh, today's word will be coming uh, from the book of Proverbs. We will be reading uh, verse number 16, uh, chapter number 16, sorry, and verse number 18. The book of Proverbs, chapter number 16, and verse 18. And this is what the word of God says, that pride goes before destruction, a haunted spirit before a fall. I've just read from the NIV version, uh, the word has just told us that pride goes before destruction, a haunted spirit before a fall. Allow me to pray uh, so that the Holy Spirit of God can lead us through the word. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I want to bless your holy name. I want to glorify your mighty name because you are faithful, you are able, and you are mighty, and there is none like you. Thank you, Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords, for giving us this opportunity to share your word. As we share your word this moment, God, I pray that you are going to lead us with your Holy Spirit. May you speak unto us, Almighty Father. Let your word make an impact in our lives today. And it is in the name of Jesus I make it a prayer of faith. Amen. 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 So, uh... There is that word that we have uh, just read uh, from the book of Proverbs chapter number 16 and uh, verse number 18. I want us to begin by understanding uh, the difference between the two words that have just been mentioned in the script, uh, pride and haunting. Pride, we would say simply, is a feeling of satisfaction, a feeling of satisfaction uh, which is derived from one's own achievement. That feeling of satisfaction that is derived from one, uh, one's own achievements. On the other hand, we would say that haunting would mean an act of feeling superior or better than others. An act of feeling superior or better than others. In other words, when we talk about proud people, we would say that they are attention seeker. They feel that they need to be appreciated. They think that everybody loves what they do and what they have and what they are. And they believe uh, they got the best and they boast so much about what they got. A haunted spirit is a kind of pride, on the other hand, that makes one feel better than other people in everything. So it is a kind of, a uh, haunted spirit is a kind of pride that now uh, makes one feel better 
than the rest of people in everything that he does in everything that they encounter they feel that they are they, they, they go the best they do not have a, a time to listen they just feel that whatever they know is the best they just feel that whatever they have is the best they don't give other people an opportunity and that is what we call bad pride that is what we call a haunty spirit whereby you feel you are so superior you feel that you are so important you feel that you are so big you feel that you are so relevant than all other people and uh as i was reading uh, this word i came across this scripture that has just told us that pride brings destruction and i want to bring to our attention and tell us this that god hates pride i want us to have an overview of the book of obadiah so that we can have an understanding of god's view about pride and what consequences are we likely to face as a result of being proud people uh, when you take your bible in the old testament and you read through the book of obadiah it was a vision that concerned the fall of endom endom uh, is a place where the endomites dwelt and uh, just to give you an overview of who endomites were these were the people who came uh, in the lineage of Esau, uh, the brother to Jacob. We can remember them uh, somewhere in the beginning where Jacob took the blessing of Esau. So when we talk about the end of mice, we are talking about now the generation that came from Esau. And uh, when you read uh, that book of Obadiah, it's just a short book. You can take time and read it. It is a one chapter book with only 21 verses. It is very rich and it talks so much about pride. And uh, we get to understand, when we read from that book, uh, there are a few things that we get to understand from that book that uh, God is not happy about pride. Actually, God hates pride very much. And uh, the people of Edom were being destroyed, or rather God, had given this prophecy that they shall be destroyed out of their uh, their pride. And God destroyed Endom because of pride. They had a haunty spirit. They felt they were better than their brother Judah. Uh, Judah was now uh, the, the generation that followed his brother, uh, the brother of Esau, whom we all know was Jacob. So the, 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 the generation that came after him are the people that we call the people of Judah. And uh, we are calling them brother because they originated from one uh, parent uh, who was Isaac. Uh, the two brothers, the, uh, Jacob and Esau. And that is where we are referring to them as brothers in this text as we uh, be going through. And therefore, uh, we say that uh, Endom also referred to as the dukes, had had this haunty spirit and they felt that they were better than their brother Judah. And some of the things that have been recorded in the book of Abadiah that made them feel so superior over their brother is that uh, they were well located. Where they were living, uh, they had natural protection. And... Uh, they had developed so many allies and uh, they are believed uh, to have had people who are so wise when you have read the bible you have heard about the people of the east uh, those that were wise they were people from Eno. and therefore out of these many things that they got it caused them to develop a lot of pride they, they, they were located somewhere where actually there were routes of trade that were passing by their land. And uh, one thing is that they generated a lot of wealth from uh, that, 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 that uh, scenario. And therefore they felt that they were so uh, good. They felt that they were so great. They felt that they were so superior. And uh, they felt that they were so good over their brothers. And... Uh, because of this, their pride made them uh, to do nothing when Judah was under attack 
by the Philistines and the Babylonians. Babylonian. At that time, uh, there was a time that Judah was attacked by the Arabs and the Phil uh, Philistines. And instead of uh, Judah uh, helping, the, uh, instead of Edom helping Judah in the fight, they, 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 they did not do anything about it. They just watched them. They just watched them lose their will. They just watched them lose everything uh, that they had. And uh, that was out of the pride that they had. And uh, the other mistake that they did is that actually uh, the Bible says that they were laughing at them. During war, they would just go on top of the, of the rocks, on the tops of the mountains, and look at their brother uh, losing the battles. And uh, at some point, they would even take back those people who tried to escape from the, uh, the, the battlefield so that they could be taken as slaves uh, in that time. And therefore, God was not happy about this action. And that is why God now is sending this Obadiah and uh, he, is, he is releasing this prophecy through this uh, Obadiah and he is telling them that he is going to destroy them that he is going uh, 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 to destroy them completely. And uh, the Bible says actually in verse 2, that the Lord shall make them small in value and in size. Even though their pride makes them feel that they are so big, even though their pride makes them feel that they, they are so valuable, the Lord is telling them that he shall show them that they got nothing. He shall show them that they are nothing. He will decline them in value and in size. So brethren, uh, there is one thing uh, that I learned from uh, this encounter of the Endomites. That God hates pride in this manner. These people had an opportunity to do something about their brother Judah. But they did nothing because of their pride. They had a chance. Maybe if they would have gotten into the fight with the Judah, they would have won and they would not have lost everything. But because of pride, they stayed aside and uh, they just watched their brother lose the battle and wealth. And this thing made God so angry. So God is not happy with us when we watch each other suffer. Especially we Christians, uh, when we receive Christ, we become brothers and sisters. We become one family. So uh, God does not want to see us look uh, or rather ignore each other during suffering. God expects us uh, to have that brotherly love for one another. God expects us to have that sister love for one another as one family. And when, when we rise against each other, God is not happy about it. When we neglect each other in time of suffering, when we neglect each other out of our, 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 our personal and, uh, uh, and our own ambition, God is not happy about it. Endomites neglected Judah out of their own ambitions. They neglected Judah out of their own interest. And God was not happy about it. That is the same thing that happens with our lives as Christians. When we neglect one another in times of need, God is not happy about it, and that is pride. And uh, the other thing is that God's wrath shall fall on the proud. We, when you read the book of Obadiah, when you go down, actually, the Bible tells, uh, tells us that he made sure that uh, the endoms were destroyed and the, and the Babylonians. And up to date, they don't exist. They vanish. Because God promised to destroy them completely. And why did they vanish? Why did they end? Why did they become extinct? It is, was out of pride. It was out of personal uh, gains. It was out of personal motive. It was out of, out of them not showing love for their brother. Uh, for their brother Judah. And this is something that I want to bring to our attention. Even it has happened to our nations currently. You find that uh, nations uh, have had so much into artificial intelligence, into technology, into wealth accumulation, and to so many other things that they are now feeling superior. 
nations have started feeling superior than others. And that is where we, we, we can see a nations trying to rise to one another because they want to weigh how strong they are, how powerful they are. They want to show how powerful they are, how capable they are. The same thing that caused the people of Endom to be destroyed. They believed in their own intelligence. They believed in their own wisdom. They forgot that there was God. God can send calamities to destroy nations. God can send calamities to destroy people. The people of Endom, God caused war against their own allies. And they were fought by the Roman, uh, I believe that they were destroyed by, uh, during the Roman reign. And they are nowhere to feature in the map of the world. And therefore, I want to speak to all of us as people, as nations, that it is always good to remember. It is not bad to be proud of what we have achieved, but as well, it is not good to put all our attention over our achievements. It is good to be wise. It is good to be wealthy. It is good to have all those things. But it is bad to boast about them. Remember that each and everything that we got in this world is a gift from God. And every gift that comes from God, God expects us to use it to serve humanity. God expects us to use it to elevate his name. God expects us to use it to change other people's lives. But when we start using the blessings and the gifts of God for personal gains, then God is not a man. He can take them away from us. He had blessed the men, uh, uh, the, the end of mice with wisdom. He had given them a good land that, that had natural security from attacks. But these people forgot that it was God who, was given, who had given them that, uh, that. And they began thinking that it was their own achievement. They began centering uh, 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 their attention on that. And they took the credit for themselves. And what happened to them? They were all destroyed. I don't know, and I don't want to associate it with, but I want us to ask ourselves this question. What would be the cause of this pandemic that we are experiencing right now? Could it be God who is trying that to teach us something? Could it be God that is trying to tell us that you may be intelligent, you may have technology, but I still remain to be God? Could God be teaching us a lesson like he taught the Endomite? Could God be reminding us that he is there? Could we have concentrated so much on what we have achieved and forgotten the God that has enabled us to achieve? And that is why maybe we have, uh, we have had such an encounter. It is a food for thought for all of us. And we should think about it. And when we think about it, we should realize and go back to the drawing board and ask ourselves, where did we go wrong? Or rather, what happened that we lost it? Where did we lose it? And how can we recover it? You see, when we let the wrath of God come upon us, it is so hard. It is so. It, I, I remember that, that when God used his wrath to punish his people, it was not friendly. Remember the time of Noah, it was not friendly. I remember, I remember the, the time of Sodom and Gomorrah. It was not friendly. So I, I wouldn't want to imagine the wrath of God coming upon us. So I believe even uh, this time that we are experiencing this powerful ex epidemic, uh, pandemic that has shaken the nation, maybe God is sending us a warning and he is telling us, you guys, you may have intelligence, you may have wisdom, but remember, I am the giver of wisdom. I am the giver of each and everything right like uh, that you are boasting with right now and uh, when we come to that realization and when we come to such a reasoning then we would go back and have no reason uh, to be proud of what we have i have also seen it happen with people that you find we are so humble when requesting from god we are so humble when asking for divine elevation from God, when we are asking for divine blessings from God, but when God comes and blesses us, we forget the blesser. And we dwell so much on the blessing. 
We ask God for great things. We ask God for education. We ask God for wealth. We ask God for jobs. We ask God for families. We ask God for so many things in our lives. But when God gives us all these things to us, we forget that it is God who has given us. And we begin worshiping these things. We begin serving these things. We begin elevating these things. We make them our center. We make them a center of our attention. And we forget the God who blessed us with them. We even take it to the next level of humiliating other people. We take it to the next level of causing other people to suffer. Because of what God has given us, we feel we are better than others. Because of what God has given us, we feel we are superior than others. Because of what God has given us, we feel that nobody can tell us anything. We feel that nobody can have anything to share with us. Brethren, that is a spirit of pride. We call it the haunted spirit. It is a very bad spirit and can cause us destruction. The Bible said, uh, just told us that a haunted spirit before a fall. Pride brings destruction. A haunted spirit before a fall. The moment you begin exercising pride, that is the moment you begin falling. It doesn't matter what you have. It doesn't matter what God has given you. It is your opportunity to show God that you are, you, you are appreciating it. It is an opportun opportunity to show God that, 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 that you, are so, uh, you are so thankful about it. By serving others, by helping others, by blessing others, and not humiliating others, not being arrogant, not being center of attention. When we do that, then God will bless us more. God will empower us more. Remember the Bible says that God shall always fight for his people. You may use the blessings that God has blessed you to humiliate other people. You may be so arrogant about other people, but remember Edomites. They were so proud over their brother because of their achievement. But what happened for them? At the end of it, God fought for Judah. They exist today in Israel. But what happened to Edomites? They are nowhere to be located in the map of the world. So it is upon us as, uh, as living uh, human beings to know that pride is the last thing that should come upon our lives. When you want to be proud, just remind God, tell God to humble you. Humility is the key to our success. Humility is the key to our living. Humility is the key to humanity. You cannot serve humanity unless you are humble. You cannot grow even in this life unless you are humble. Your pride will cause people to move away from you. Your pride will cause people uh, to set you aside. Your pride will cost you your social life. Your, proud, your pride will cost you your life like it costed the people of Endermite. Your pride can cost you your job. Your pride can cost you your family. Your pride can cost you friends. Brethren, let's be humble. Let's embrace one another in love. Let's love each other for God is love and he is for all of us. If God is for us, no one can be against us. That was the powerful word that the Lord had put in my heart today. I believe that whoever shall listen to this word today, whoever shall uh, learn to this word today, his life shall not remain the same. And I pray that this a moment that the Lord shall put a heart of humility in us and that we shall die off every pride. No matter what we have, no matter what achievements we have, we shall die pride and be humble. And God says he loves a humble spirit and he is willing, he will continue elevating you from one level to another. Don't be judgmental. Just work on your path. It is only God who has the power to judge. It is only God who has the power to know what is evil and what is, uh, what, what is right. Just live your life humble. Live your life focused. Live your, live your calling. Live for God. The rest of the things, let God take over. Let God fight your battles. Don't uh, stand out there to prove yourself. 
just allow me to pray with us and I know that God is going to bless us. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I want to bless your holy name because of this time that you have created. Thank you for the many blessings that you have released upon our lives. Thank you for the word that you have taught us today, O my dear Father, that pride brings destruction in our lives and a haunting spirit brings a fall. This moment, Jehovah Father, I want to pray that your spirit shall teach us, O my dear Father, to remain humble and never to be proud. Help us to count others important uh, uh, just as we are in this life, Jehovah Father. Give us a heart of humility. Give us a heart of servantship. And when you do this, glory and honor shall go back to you. Thank you because you have been together with us since the beginning of the world up to this moment, Jehovah. Take all the glory for it belongs to you. Bless each and every person that has taken time to, uh, to, to watch this video till the end, Jehovah Father. May their life not remain the same. May you uh, come at the point of their need. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you uh, for taking time to watch this video. Uh, you can share with others so that they can also be blessed uh, by the same. Uh, just as, been, as you have been blessed and God is going to bless you. Meanwhile, uh, remember at this time we are keeping safe. Uh, just continue. Uh, following the directives from the government to keep safe in this period. We need you uh, even after COVID-19. Remember to keep social distance. Remember to, uh, to wash your hands with soap thoroughly. Uh, remember uh, to do all those things that you have been requested to do uh, by the ministries of health for our safety. God bless you. God bless you. Until you meet again.